Okay, so here we have the parent again, or you can call it the common function. We already graphed him. Uh, except this time, our child is adding 2 in the exponent. Now, it helps some students to see the exponent with parentheses around it. So if you want to put parentheses around the exponent, that's cool. But you don't have to because they're little. Now, if you have really bad writing and you want to make sure that you know that it's an exponent, then, yeah, use parentheses. It helps you. Um, so there's a trick to this. I have an X and a Y. You have to pick special X's. You can't pick the same X's this time because, you see, the X's are changed. We are adding 2 to the X's. Watch. See, see what happens. If I just pick negative 1, 0, 1, and 2, what's going to happen? Well, uh, I have 3 to negative 1. I have to add 2 to it. And what will that give me? So one, I'll be 3 one. to the three to the 1 power. Okay, that's not bad. So I got 3. Uh, that's, not, that's not bad at all. So I got a 3 right there. What about, what about 0? When I plug in 0, it would be 3 to the 0 power plus 2. That would be 3 to 2 power, which is 9. nine. That's not that bad either. Um, but then we start getting into things like this. 1 <coughs> plus 2. 1 plus 2 is 3. Uh, so I have 3 to the 3rd power, which you can do. 27. But 27 is definitely not on my graph. Right? 1, 27 is not on my graph. Now, can you imagine what 2 is going to be? If I plug in 2, I get 2 to... Um, 3 to the 2 plus 2, I have 3 to the 4, which is 81. Whoa. Yeah, that's definitely not on my graph. And in fact, what if I pick a 3? It's going to be an even bigger number. It's not going to be on my graph. So you've got to be more strategic in, in picking your points. Because this and this are not going to be on my graph, so it's not going to help me see what the shape is going to be. So how can I figure out, or how can I pick different X's that will actually be on my graph? Fractions. Uh, yeah, you can go the fraction route, but um, those are those are going to be ugly. Uh, look, look at this. Look at this. Come on. Negative. Yeah, negative what? Negative 2. Why not? If I pick a negative 2, uh, what will I get? Well, that, that one's a lot prettier. I get 3 to the negative 2 plus 2. And what's negative 2 plus 2? Zero. 0. Oh, nice and pretty. What's 3 to 0? 1 power. Okay, so if I pick a negative 3, what's going to happen for that one? 3 to the negative 3 plus 2? Yeah, it'd be uh, 3 to the negative 1, which is 1 third. Okay, so now we're back to our nice, pretty Ys that are actually on our graph. Let's graph it to see what it looks like. Uh, negative 1 goes up to 3 this time. Uh, and this time, negative, oh, 0 goes up to 9. Right there. And then um, 2 goes up to, negative 2 goes up to positive 1. And negative 3 goes up to 1 third this time. So look, this is what happens. This is what your graph looks like. What happened? Shifted what? It shifted which way? Left. It shifted to the left, which is different than what you're probably thinking because it says plus 2. But whenever you're adding or you know, subtracting, doing something to the independent variable, you have to think the opposite of what it's doing. So this says it's adding 2, so you've got to think it's shifting left 2. So this shifts it to the left 2. Does that change my asymptote? Does not change my asymptote. My asymptote is still right there. Oh, so if I add something or subtract something from the x, it does not change my asymptote. My asymptote is still y equals 0. What about my range? Same. 0 to positive infinity. Same as what we've seen before. And then the domain is still negative infinity to positive infinity. We can still plug in anything to it. All right, last one that I want to show you in this video is uh, a child that has a negative on the x. Now, I kind of already shown you guys this uh, with the DNA, but let's throw it in the video. Um, does that change which x values I would like to pick? I mean, will I get nice numbers if I pick negative 1, 0, 1, and 2? Let's try it. If I plug in negative 1, see, 3 to negative, negative 1. I plug in negative 1. Negative negative 1 is? 1. 1. So this is 3 to the 1, which equals 3. Oh, that's not bad. So I get 3 right there. If I plug in 0, that's not bad. That's negative 0, which you can't have, so the negative goes away. 3 to the 0 power is 1. So boom. And what about 3 to the negative, uh, and I plug in 1? That would be 1 third. Right. So I have 1 third. And if I plug in a 2, I'll be, let's see, I better just do it, negative 2, and that would be 1 over 3 to the positive 2, which would be 1 over 9. Uh, let's graph it, see what it looks like. Uh, negative 1 goes, uh, no, negative 1 goes up to 3, 
zero goes at one still. Uh, one is one third, and two is one ninth. So what's happening, I mean, if you're not sure what the shape is, you can pick more x values to figure it out. But that's what's happening. It, sh it changed the graph. The x's switched places, if you will. If the x was over here, now it's over here. See, this x right here shifted from this x right here. The x, they, they switch x's. They, they go to the opposite x, which makes sense because it says the opposite of x right there, negative x. So, does that change my asymptote? No. no. Remember, there's only one thing that changes the asymptote, and that's if something is adding or if something is subtracting from my function. Okay? So, this is um, y equals 0. Did my range change? No, it's still 0 to positive infinity. And then my domain is still negative infinity to positive infinity. When I say change, I'm talking about like the, all this information for our parent function. And um, it looks like it's all pretty much the same.